Now we are done, I'm going to start on nonlinear transformation and I'm going to give you a, 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 a very interesting uh, tool to play with. So here is the, 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 the deal, okay? You probably realize that even when dealing with non-separable data, we are dealing with non-separable data that are really basically separable with few exceptions. But in reality, when you take a, a, a real problem, a, a real life problem, you will find that the data you are going to get could be anything. Could be, for example, something that looks like this. Okay? So you want to classify these as plus ones and these as, mi as minus ones. Let's take the classification paradigm here. Okay? Now, I can put the line anywhere and obviously I'm in trouble because the, you know, this is not linearly separable even by a long shot. Okay? You can look at this and say, okay, I can see what the pattern here, you know, closer to the center you have blues, closer to the peripherals you have reds, okay? So it would be very nice if I could apply a hypothesis that looks like this. Yes, the only problem is that that's not linear. We don't have the tools to deal with that yet. Wouldn't it be nice if in two view graphs, you can use linear regression and linear classification, the perceptron or the pocket, to apply it to this guy. That's what will happen. Okay? I told you this is a practical lecture. Okay? Okay. So we take another example of nonlinearity. We take the credit line. Okay. Now, if you look at the credit line, the credit line is affected by years of residence. We, we argued that if someone has been in the same residence for a long time, there is stability and trustworthiness, and someone has been in a short time, you know, there is a question mark, okay? Now, this one thing is to say that this is the, 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 uh, uh, a variable that affects the output. Another thing to say is that this is a variable that affects the output linearly, okay? It would be strange if I'm trying to determine a credit line to decide that the credit line will be proportional to the time you have lived in residence, okay? If you live 10 years, 20 years, I will give you twice the credit line. Doesn't make sense. Because stability is established probably by the time you get to five years. After that, it's diminishing returns, okay? So it would be very nice if I can, instead of using the linear one, define nonlinear features, which is the following. Let's take the condition, the logical condition, that the years in residence are less than one. And in my mind, I'm cons considering that, okay, uh, this is not very stable, you haven't been there for very long. And another guy, which is xi greater than five, you have been there for more than five years, so you are stable. The, the, the notation here, when I put something between these brackets, means that this returns one if the condition is true, and returns zero if the condition is false. Okay, so this is one zero, and this is one zero. Now, if I had those as variables in my linear regression, they would be much more friendly to the linear formula in deciding the credit line, rather than the crude input. But these are nonlinear functions of xi. And again, we have the nonlinearity, and we wonder if we can apply the same techniques to a nonlinear case. Okay. So this is the question, can we use linear models? The key question to ask is, Linear in what? Okay. What do I mean? Look at linear regression. What does it implement? It implements this. This is indeed a linear formula. Okay. And when you look at the linear classification counterpart, it implements this. This is a linear formula. And the algorithm being simple depends on this part being linear. And then you just make a decision based on that signal. Okay. Now, these, you would think, are called linear because they are linear in the x's, which they are, okay? Yeah, I get these inputs and I combine them linearly and I get my surface, that's why I'm calling it linear. However, you will realize that, more importantly, these guys are linear in w. Now, when you go from the definition of a function to learning, the roles are reversed. The inputs, which are supposed to be the variable when you evaluate a function, are now constants. They are dictated by the training set. They are just a bunch of numbers someone gave me. The real variable, as far as learning is concerned, are the parameters. This is the fact that it's linear in the parameters is what matters in deriving the perceptron learning algorithm and the linear regression algorithm. If you go back to the derivation, 
it didn't matter what the x's were. The x's were sitting there as constants, and their linearity in W is what enables the derivation. Okay? So that results in the algorithm work because of linearity in the weights. Now that opens a fantastic possibility because now I can take the inputs which are just constants. Someone gives me data and I can do incredible nonlinear transformations to that data and it will just remain more elaborate data but constant. When I get to learn using the nonlinearly transformed data, the, I'm still in the realm of linear models because the weights that will be given to the nonlinear features will be, have a linear dependency. So let's look at an example, okay? Let's say that you take x1 and x2, I, I omitted the, the constant x0 here for simplicity, and these are the guys that gave us trouble, okay? This is the, the, the coordinates, this is x1, this is x2, these guys should map to plus one, these guys should map to minus one, I don't have a linear separator. Okay, fine. These are data, right? So everything that appears within this box is just a, a, a bunch of constants x's and corresponding constants y's. So now I'm going to take a transformation, I'm going to call it phi. Every point in that space I'm going to transform to another space. And my formula for transformation will be this. I'm assuming here that the origin of the coordinate system is here. So I'm taking x1 squared and x2 squared, and you can see where I'm leading, okay? Because now I'm measuring distances from the origin, and that seems to be a helpful guy here. Now, in doing this, all I did was take constants and produce other constants, okay? Now, you can look at this and say, okay, this is my training data. I take your original training data, do the transformation, and forget about the original one. Can you solve the problem in the new space? Oh, yes, you can, because that's what they look, uh, look like in the new space, okay? All of a sudden, the red guys, which happen to be far away, okay, will have bigger values for x1 squared and x2 squared. They will sit here. And the guys that are closer to the origin, by the time they transform them, they will have smaller values here. So this is now your new data set. Can you separate this using a perceptron? Yes, I can. I can put a line going through here. Great. When you get a new point to classify, transform it the same way, classify it here, and then report that. That's the game. And there is really no limit, at least computationally, in terms of what you can do here. You can dream up really elaborate nonlinear transformations. Transform the data, and then do the classification. There is a catch, and it's a big catch, okay? So I will stop here and we'll continue with the nonlinear transformation at the beginning of the next lecture.